Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Stephen Borrega and getting an update on Anchor Resources. Did I pronounce that properly? You got it, Tracy. Great to be here. Well, we are delighted to have you. You've had a lot of news recently, so let's just start with the announcement about how you've reclaimed control of the Peacock Gold Project. Thanks, Tracy. So we've been working with a group out of Australia on the on the cognac license uh, for a number of years. Uh, Emerald Resources was the name of that company. Excellent team. And uh, they actually were managing the project on their own. They, they were funding it, and uh, we were happy to be hands-off with them. Very professional group that are actually bringing the very first modern-day uh, gold mine online. It's called the Ocval Asset. And they have north of a million ounces of, uh, of resource just south of, of the Cognac license. And uh, they're focusing on, 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 uh, on bringing that project forward. Uh, along with additional exploration, but the time was uh, is tight, and they decided that it was time for them to move on from cognac, and uh, we're happy to to reclaim it. Quite frankly, some of the results that came back were very exciting. They got 3.61 grams per ton over an eight meter run on one of their first RC holes, and we're going to go back there during the dry season, and we're going to twin it with some diamond drilling to uh, to a depth of maybe 500 meters and. And, uh, and see what we're looking at on the Peacock Prospect. But it's nice to have a series of gold assets and, to, uh, and gold targets, I should say, to, uh, to, to look at in the dry season this year. Well, of course, I've known you for, for a number of years, and we do appreciate that this is an area of strength and expertise for you. Um, I was reading about your also your recent uh, news release about your high-grade samples and those results, which just looked outstanding uh, to me from the Andong Mias project net property. Now, this is a separate property from the license we just discussed. Is that not correct? That is correct. So these two licenses are 100% owned by Anchor. The Andong Mies license is actually a license that we've had in our possession for many years, and we've held back, waiting for the right time uh, with the amount of right funding in order to really do it justice. Andong Mies is actually known uh, in the Khmer language as well of gold, and there's a lot of historical artisanal mining that has gone on in the area, and uh, we have a variety of targets, a number of targets on the Andong Mies license. So the recent results were, were grab samples, were, were float samples. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and uh, this dry season, uh, will be it'll be our priority to be working on the wild boar prospect, specifically where, where you saw those up to 70 grams per ton samples coming from. Uh, it's actually several different vein segments that run over 700 meters that have been identified so far. So we're really excited and we're looking forward to the rain stopping because as of right now, we have not been able to do very much work because of the uh, significant rains that are falling during the wet season. So, again, these, these seem like spectacular results, 70.7 uh, .7 grams per ton, which, of course, you just touched on. Um, can I ask you what attracted you to the Andog Mia's property? Obviously, knowing, did you have some idea you were going to get these kinds of, uh, kinds of results back? And, and one of our writers actually told me to mention that this uh, – property means well of gold. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. So you always hope to get good results, obviously, during your exploration programs. Um, and uh, we're, we're excited by this initial phase. This is just surface work, so we have yet to drill. Um, and uh, we're getting to targeting as we speak, actually. We've got a team on the ground working, uh, working through the rainy season to get to a point where we're going to be targeting and, uh, and preparing for our drill program, upcoming drill program this season. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the name and on me is actually historically does mean uh, well of gold. And uh, that is because the, the, the story goes back that actually uh, Angkor Wat, which is the, the lost city, was originally covered in gold. And as the his history would have it, they believe that a lot of that gold was mined originally in this region. So hence the, hence the name for the region of Andong means. Okay. And, and so the COVID-19, I might as well touch on that. How has that affected uh, your team, Stephen? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's had an awful effect on the world, obviously. 
and uh, and with travel being curtailed as much as it has been, we've uh, we were actually in Cambodia early March. Uh, I was in the midst of negotiations on our production sharing contract on our oil and gas asset when the world started to close down and we needed to leave. Um, and obviously, we haven't been able to go back now. Uh, on for, or fortunately. We actually have our team on the ground. Our VP of exploration remained in Cambodia throughout. And uh, while we've had to uh, rely on a smaller team, uh, we've still been able to do some, some ongoing work programs throughout the process. The biggest hindrance for us, obviously, is the wet season, which has coincided with the COVID timeframe. But uh, for us, uh, the biggest issue is I'm not able to go to country. Uh, our team's not able to get into country at this stage. Um, but once the uh, once once res- travel restrictions are lifted a little bit, and once obviously we get into a into a into the dry season, we'll be very excited to 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 move forward significantly. So I'm assuming that this has obviously impacted your oil approval process. That's right. So as I mentioned, we were actually in the midst of our of our negotiations on on the production sharing contract. That's a that's a, a contract that set, basically establishes the entire para, all parameters from exploration through to production. So it's a very detailed. They've done the Cambodian government has done an exceptionally uh, good job in preparing the documentation to international standards, and uh, we were very pleased to be engaged in 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 these dial in this dial in these conversations. However, due to COVID. Uh, we had to call call them and put them to a, to a pause on those conversations, and we still have yet to be able to get back into a face to face environment where we can we can continue. Um, that production sharing contract is the missing piece for us to establish our ownership on the license. So while we have the right to block eight and the sole right to block eight, the uh, production sharing contract needs to be negotiated and finalized before we can begin exploration programs on that license or on that block. Well, clearly we need to get updates from you more often because we were talking a little bit before we started recording this interview about some of the strength in your board team that has occurred here in the last little while. Would you like to talk to us about this? Absolutely. We're really very fortunate to have just recently appointed three new independent directors. Uh, Scott Smith, a geologist, uh, operator of, uh, on, on, on some significant assets here in Canada, brings a tremendous amount of bench strength to, uh, to our geology team. Uh, Steve Cochran, of course, uh, has been involved in uh, the company since day one. He was, he was, uh, he was one of the brokers who, who brought us through the IPO process, uh, has been a huge supporter of ours over the years. And, uh, and uh, former uh, uh, Richardson GMP uh, broker and now uh, managing uh, his own, his own uh, exploration company, uh, Lithium Chile. Uh, he brings a tremendous amount of experience of markets uh, and, of course, uh, his, his connections to, to the investor base as well. And then we've got Russ Tynan, uh, who is a 35-year executive leadership uh, fellow who's, who's done exceptional work actually with the Canadian Olympics teams uh, over the years as well. Uh, he brings a, a, a really good outsider's perspective on how we do, o- we do operate our operations in Cambodia. And uh, I think between the three of them, uh, our, our board's been enhanced significantly. So in addition, of course, to the board, you've had a successful capital raise. Can you tell, tell us a little bit more about where those, those funds are basically earmarked for? No problem. You know, we're obviously right now we're in, in this significant gold uh, gold phase, and and we took the opportunity to raise some capital, um, and it ended up being far bigger than we anticipated. Uh, significant interest uh, resulted in us raising 1.8 million, and those funds are earmarked for exploration on the hard rock assets. So specifically, the work that we're proposing at the Andongmi's license on wild boar. So a drill program is is in the works, and uh, we will be will be looking at at uh, commencing in the dry season. And as I mentioned, also there will be some work completed at the uh, Peacock Prospect on the cognac license. 
Well, I'll tell you, Stephen, thank you so much for this update. As always, it's a pleasure. And uh, let's, uh, let's commit to getting you on regularly, please. I welcome that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tracy. It's always great to speak with you.